Family, friends, colleagues, and graduates, welcome to the Department of Music's 2022 commencement. I want to thank David and Sydney for their beautiful performance to begin our celebration. To the class of 2022, you made it. Today is your day to celebrate your hard work, your successes, and even your struggles in getting to this special day. And in celebrating today, no doubt uh, you are reflecting on moments of these past four years when someone was there for you to help you get to the next step in your journey. Whether those people are here with you today or on the live stream or in your hearts, I invite all graduates to stand if you are able and send them your love and thanks. It is a tradition here in the Department of Music to celebrate commencement on Mother's Day. I want to wish all the moms a very happy Mother's Day. Please stand up if you are able, moms, so we can congratulate and thank you. <laughs> to be a music major at Carolina is a special thing. Whether you've taken lessons from the age of four or first taught yourself your instrument as a young teenager, you made the choice to make music a central part of your studies at UNC. And as your faculty, we have seen you grow not only as performers and researchers, but also as people, caring and thoughtful people. For these last two years, I have grown too in working with my colleagues department staff, and you to help navigate the department through unprecedented times. We did it, and for that, I am grateful to be your chair. Grateful, I say? Well, I'll tell you that after I had accepted the chair in February 2020, <laughs> do the math, colleagues sent me condolences <laughs> instead of congratulations, which I thought was kind of odd. I learned soon enough, though, that it was a quirky rite of passage that colleagues say to new chairs. Little did any of us know that in a matter of weeks, the world would turn upside down. But here we are, a little over two years from that time, and I feel more grateful than ever to be a part of this amazing department with some of the most talented and inspiring people who we, the faculty and staff, have the pleasure and honor to teach, to mentor, and to serve. There is no department like music at Carolina. You will follow in the footsteps of your predecessors who went on to accomplish amazing things in and beyond music. You may even follow in the footsteps of one special alumna of the music department at Carolina and become dean <laughs> at one of the most prestigious universities in the country. You'll be hearing from her a little later in the program. So let's begin our program. Professors Jocelyn Neal and Evan Feldman will recognize our degree recipients. Dr. Neal. Will all the Bachelor of Arts degree recipients please stand? And please proceed to the stage as I read the names. Rose Rennell Abernathy. Eamon Anthony Bejani. Naja Monet Brown. Trevor Lamar Brown. Shannon Chen. Justin Ryan Crocker. Kai Alexander Davis. 
Sarah Elizabeth Davis. John William Feshuk Jr. Justin Fligstein. Gian Gabriel Gibbony. Virginia Abigail Hawkins. Ari Kakoki. Ite Corman. Josephine Donby Lee. Joshua Emmanuel Lopez. Jane Grace Guichan Lobo. Alexander Grant McKevney. Paul Worley Miller. Divyan P. Narayanan. Brandon Tyler Overbeek. Lauren Elizabeth Ragsdale. Kapilish Ramanayarian. Jason Harris Reisner. Sydney Thai. Matthew Christopher Wakeford. Sylvia Wang. And Madeline Yada. <laughs> Congratulations to all our recipients of the Bachelor of Arts degree. And now Evan Fellman uh, will announce the graduates with Bachelors of Music degrees. Dr. Fellman. Would all the recipients of the Bachelor of Music degree please rise and come to the stage when your name is called? Uh, Nicole Judith Arch. Jason Alexander Blundell. Caroline Elizabeth Collins. Joseph Nicholas Chung Figliolo. David Sarber Green. Hunter Wilson Hoyle. Lena McLean Kantz. James Robert Larkins. Jordan Emily Gonzalez Lingo. <laughs> Kennedy Blair Miller. <laughs> Philip Jackson Mosley. <laughs> Jada Nicole Poteet. <laughs> Joshua Mark Shepard. Mackenzie Savannah Smith. Nick Stephen Strait. And Elizabeth Grace Yardley. Congratulations to all of our recipients of the Bachelor of Music. Neil, uh, Dr. Neil will come t up to the podium to recognize the graduate students in our graduate program in musicology. 
Our students who receive a Master of Arts in Musicology have completed two years of graduate coursework and written a substantial MA thesis, as well as passed an examination before the entire academic faculty. Today, we are celebrating our recipient of the Master of Arts degree, Elias Aaron Irving Gross, with a thesis. <laughs> Elias' thesis is titled, All for One and One for All, The Feminist Musical Labor of Aunt Molly Jackson, advised by Jocelyn Neal. <laughs> Our students who receive a Doctor of Philosophy have started with graduate coursework and shorter research papers before undertaking several years of original research in their chosen field. With their dissertation, they have completed a significant contribution to the study of music. Please join me in celebrating today our new recipients of the PhD in Musicology. Jamie Catherine Blake with a dissertation Architects of Russian America, Transnational Musical Networks in the Early 20th Century, Jamie was advised by Onegret Fauser. <laughs> Erica Catherine Fedor. Erica's dissertation was Sounding Statecraft, U.S. Cultural Diplomacy Programs in the 21st Century with the advisor Mark Katz. And Michael Levine. With a dissertation titled Lo Encontré en el Paquete, Reparto Music, Media Piracy and Cultural Exchange in Cuba's Offline Internet, advised by David Garcia. Please join me in welcoming them to an ancient and venerable company of scholars, and congratulations to our new graduates. Next, we will hear World's End by Robert Hanstein, performed by violinist Ayman Bejani and pianist Shannon Chen.
Thank you, Ayman and Shannon. I would now like to welcome to the podium our student speaker, Lena McLean Kantz. Lena is a voice major from Silva, North Carolina, graduating with the highest G GPA in our department. A student of Tim Sparks, she plans to eventually go to graduate school for a master's degree in music performance. Lena. Thank you, Dr. Garcia. Um, hello, class of 2020, our new alums, and hello to family, friends, and faculty. Um, as you heard, I'm Lena Kantz, and I'm ma I majored in vocal performance for the past few years, and I can't believe it's been four years. Um, a part of me still feels like I'm a first-year student who is completely out of her depth, but I will blame that all on the pandemic, because of course I have to talk about the pandemic, because I mean, what else have we done here? <laughs> um, I mean, when people told me nostalgic stories about college as a high school student, this was definitely not what I was expecting. Um, the last two years of Zoom ensembles and met opera streams with my poor housemates who I subjected to that, and not seeing the bottom of everyone's faces who I started school with, um, <laughs> and especially in the music department where so much of our learning is performance-based, it was really hard to feel like I was making progress as a student and as a musician. But around a year into the pandemic, I was asked to write an essay about the last live concert I attended before lockdown. And this concert was Meredith Monk's Cellular Songs. This work meant to just show the indescribable connection between humanity and nature through interpretive movements and sounds of cellular life cycles. Monk's all-female group entered the stage to dance and sing in contrasting styles, which created the independent parts of a cell working towards a common goal. One particular piece of the program stuck in my mind, and I sat in my dark little room wondering why that was. In this moment, Meredith Monk and her group stood in a tight circle in white robes on a silent red-lit stage. One woman lifted her eyes to the ceiling and let out a perfectly pitched visceral scream. Slowly, each member did the same and began to sway in a dissonant cluster around her. At the time of the concert, I found this quite comical, but it turned out to be the most memorable part. And to answer my question about why this had such an impact on me was uh, music is a communal activity that crosses bridges and makes sense of the world in a way that Monk somehow captured for me in her piece. I realized this is why I came to college and despite the pandemic, found a community. From hiking through snow to study with friends for a theory midterm my first year to watching the same friends give recitals and defend theses, I have constantly grown with my fellow music students as we figure out how to navigate a world that turned our future endeavors upside down. While opportunities were lost, I am not alone when I say that COVID-19 gave me an ability to adapt and to appreciate the support of the people in this department. Not only have I made wonderful friendships with my fellow students, I have adored getting to know the faculty here as well. Each professor I have had classes with has fostered a creative and inquisitive space for developing musicians. So many new areas of interest in the world of music have opened to me through this department. During the pandemic, they continued to create engaging outlets and offer advice on musical careers in the post-pandemic world, which hopefully we'll get to someday. <laughs> um, through water crises, my freshman year and our flash floods every year and false in-person starts, I have felt like there was always someone in my corner, whether a student or faculty member. The collaborative spirit of Meredith Monk's performance in ways resembles the connections I have made here. Each of our paths is wildly different, much like the seemingly random movements of her performers, and yet somehow we all ended up here and made music together. My years here with these wonderful people remind me of that classic Aaron Copeland quote, so long as the human spirit thrives on this planet, music in some living form will accompany and sustain it and give it expressive meaning. The pandemic surely did disrupt our plans and bring many issues to light, but in the midst of all of that, we continued to make music that helped us make sense of it, even if it was just a scream into the void. Music was my outlet and connected me with many of my favorite people before I came to UNC, but after what we have all accomplished together in such strange times, I feel more confident than ever that music is the most important human art form for bringing together communities. Honestly, I do not think I could have found a greater community within any other department. 
I cannot believe that we will be parting ways so soon, but I am excited to witness everyone's adventures as I know they will be amazing. No matter which way we go after graduation, I hope that we all continue to use mu music as a refuge in some capacity, hopefully not during another pandemic. With that, my wonderful, talented community, congratulations on your years of dedicated work and your step into your next adventure. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lena. You're an exceptional member of this department, and thank you also for representing us so well at yesterday's doctoral hooding at the Dean Dome. Our next performer is Jane Larkins, who will play an original piece for cello solo called Bacchanal.
Thank you, James. Now, Professor Lee Weissert will present our music department awards. Dr. Weissert? Good afternoon. Congratulations, graduates, and congratulations to the mothers. It's my uh, honor and pleasure to announce the following uh, special awards for scholarly and artistic excellence. And to the award winners, if you could uh, please come to the stage when you hear your name to receive your award. The David Aarons Award for Excellence. You just keep walking, James. <laughs> the David Aarons Award for Excellence in Musical Performance goes to James Robert Larkins. The Music Department Award for Academic Excellence goes to Lena McLean Kantz. The Baroque Ensemble Award, David Sarber Green. The Chamber Music Award goes to Iman Anthony Bejani, James Robert Larkins, and Sidney Ty. The Choral Music Award goes to Nicole Judith Arch. The Jonathan Gregory Rohr Award goes to Philip Jackson Mosley. The Benjamin Swaleen Orchestra Award, Ayman Anthony Bejani. The Thelma Thompson Composition Award goes to David Sarber Green. And the UNC Opera Award goes to Virginia Abigail Hawkins, Lena McLean Kantz, Kennedy Blair Miller, and Mackenzie Savannah Smith.
and the remainder of the awards listed in the program have already been given out. Uh, please join me in congratulating all of our award winners. Today we have a very special guest with us. Dr. Terry Ellen Rhodes is about to retire from her position as Dean of the UNC College of Arts and Sciences after 35 years of service to the university. Yes. Before being appointed Dean, Terry served as Senior Associate Dean of the College and before that was chair and a beloved member of the music department faculty, teaching voice and directing UNC opera. Terry also did her undergraduate work at UNC, majoring in music and studying both voice and piano. Please welcome Dean Rhodes to the podium to deliver today's commencement address. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome students, parents, friends, and supporters. Hearty congratulations are in order to you for having reached this prestigious goal during such a fraught and uncertain period, figuring out how to manage and hopefully thrive during this period has taken, you've heard all these words earlier today and throughout the weekend and throughout the semester, Resilience, flexibility, creativity, grace, kindness, and compassion. I'm hoping that you have found those qualities in others in our Carolina community during your time here, and that perhaps you also have strengthened those same skills and qualities in yourselves. And on a personal note, I am indeed honored to have been invited to provide the keynote for today's graduation ceremony in music. As David said, I'm an alumna of this program, Bachelor of Music, 78, a proud parent of a 2019 graduate of this program, and on June 30th, retiring. After 35 years as a music faculty member, and 25 years really were spent here in this department, missed it not being here as much but just being here today with you graduates and with my dear colleagues and I see a lot of you in the room today faculty and staff colleagues it just warms my heart I thank you Lena for what you said about this department it is true it is a wonderful department of great people I'm so pleased though to hear students continue to say that I'm not surprised my marvelous Carolina journey began right here in Hill Hall. Actually, I started coming to the campus when I was a junior high school student from Raleigh, participating in various piano and voice competitions, most of which happened right here on this Hill Hall stage. And it was not Miser Auditorium then. The $15 million transformation of this place happened in recent years when air conditioning was finally added. <laughs> Can you imagine? Now, we wouldn't have needed it on a day like today, but a number of you in the room remember those days. So yes, I arrived here as an undergraduate in 1974, and those four years were perhaps the most formative of my life in so many realms. Yes, I majored in voice piano, but I loved other areas, I'm sure like many of you, especially my courses in English, history, political science. As a student, I was a vocalist in a jazz band that performed in local bars and restaurants, and I waitressed at a Greek-Italian place called Leo's. It's now the Lantern. And, and I went to a few basketball games. We were in the Final Four in 1977. We were. And some great concerts like Fleetwood Mac and Carmichael Auditorium, yeah, in 1976. So I hope that you, too, have had opportunities to explore courses outside of music and experiences outside of the classroom. And I imagine there are a few in this audience who rushed Franklin Street after beating a certain team in March and then doing it again in early April, right? And I trust that you have and know that you have been inspired and challenged by faculty, staff, 
and your fellow students. I always felt that way, and I'm sure that that's the case for you all too, who pushed you forward in positive ways. Yes, after graduating in 1978, I went on to earn my master's and doctorate at the Eastman School of Music, like Dr. Neal, wearing our Eastman blue and gold, um, and then traveled the world following my career. I did not imagine then that I would be asked to come back to my alma mater as a faculty member. But serendipitously, that's the word, I was offered a one-year visiting assistant professorship back in 1987, and the rest is history. I did not imagine that once I joined the faculty, I would never leave, but that is indeed what happened. I taught courses in voice, lyric dictions, other vocally related courses, you've heard this, directed opera, um, and you've heard all this, so I won't go through that. Um, <laughs> but what I do want to say is did I imagine as a music student, and you kind of said this, graduating in 1978, yeah, that's the way back when, that I would someday be dean of the college from which I graduated here at UNC Chapel Hill. Well, that's a resounding no. I had no idea. And I want to impress upon each of you that the possibilities for you and your futures are boundless and probably not even in your sights at this point in your lives. Well, the enduring power of music is what I entitled this. Music provided me a foundation for everything else that followed, opening doors in ways that I could never have imagined. And I'm trusting that will be the same for you. Music making allowed me to communicate with people from all over the world, even if we didn't speak the same language. It provided me cultural understanding and served me well in strengthening all aspects of my communication skills. Music making fostered my creativity, my collaborative abilities, and my leadership abilities while all the time connecting my left and right brain. Synapses were snapping. And it really follows on what you said too, Lena. I, I love the Meredith Monk story and talking about these collaborative communities and spanning bridges. That's exactly what we do as musicians. It will serve you well as you proceed through your lives. And if COVID has taught us anything, you said this too, I'm just following on and what you said, it is how essential music is and the arts overall to our lives. I remember in the earliest days of the outbreak when everything shut down and we were all asked to stay at home essentially, I would often sit down at the piano and start playing pieces I'd studied in the past. It might be a Brahms Rhapsody or a Chopin Waltz, but that brought me such solace. It really nourished my soul. The arts, whether music, painting, theater, or any other music, but perhaps most music, can bring meaning and understanding to difficult situations. When our theaters and concert halls turned dark, turned dark we mourned their absence. When the opportunity to gather and witness live music and live theater was taken from us, we understood how much we needed it. Those of you who rehearsed and played remotely with others using video technology during this time know there is no replacement for being in the same room together, taking those subconscious cues from one another, and shaping the music together. And those of you who performed on stage in empty auditoriums know it's just not the same when the electric energy and connection with a live audience is missing. And of course, music is there at the most joyous times of our lives as well, taking us to the heights of sensibility and emotion. I was quite moved by all the music making today. And that, that was, it's a joyous moment and taking it to different heights with the music making today was very, very special indeed. Thanks to your Carolina education, you have been given a chance to explore your craft and scholarship deeply. And through music, you have entered a world of magic and power and grace. I have no doubt that as you progress through life, you will realize how profoundly your time at Carolina has shaped you and how your musical underpinning will augment and enrich your life at every turn. You may have some idea of the career path you plan to take, although my message to you today is to use those muscles of flexibility and resilience, which you've certainly honed and strengthened during this time, to explore and try paths 
which may first appear daunting, maybe even unimaginable. If we as faculty have done our jobs well at UNC, we will have taught you to be flexible and adaptable, to think, communicate, collaborate, and create. Challenge yourself, take risks, trust your instincts, learn from your failures, and above all, know that your Carolina education and your musical foundation will provide you with a solid grounding. I hope that education also inspires you to contribute to the greater good in some way. We are the nation's first public university, and we have always understood that with that recognition comes a special responsibility. Public service is in our DNA, as some have said, and here at Carolina, we are seeking to solve some of the world's greatest challenges, and we can contribute as musical artists. I'm not asking you all to commit to saving the world when you graduate this year or next, but I am asking you to give something of yourselves, be it your time, your knowledge, or your resources that contribute to making the world a better place. Yes, the bonds of the Carolina community are deep and abiding. Once a Tar Heel, always a Tar Heel. I wish you all the very best in your future endeavors, and I encourage you to stay in touch after you graduate and to come back to visit frequently. Please know that you will always have this community supporting you. Thank you, and go Heels! Thank you so much, Terry. Our final musical performance of the day will be He's Got the Whole World in His Hands, a spiritual arranged by Moses Hogan and performed by soprano Abigail Hawkins and accompanied by pianist David Green.
Thank you, Abigail. Thank you, David. Before we conclude the program, let's please thank once more the music department faculty and staff. Uh, please stand and be recognized. And I. Special thanks to Dr. Clevenel for organizing the program for today. Thank you so much, Susan. <laughs> Graduates, no matter where your path may lead you post-graduation, do us one favor. Don't forget you have a home here, as uh, Dean Rhodes said. The bonds you have forged with your fellow graduates and your teachers can never be broken but they do need a little tender care. We'll reach out to see how you're doing, and we hope you'll do the same. Following the ceremony, please join us in room 107, just down the hall that way, um, for a reception catered by our Women's Music Fraternity, SAI. And now, will you please stand, if you are able, and join Abigail Hawkins in the singing of Hark the Sound. Thank you, and congratulations to all. <laughs> 